And hello, 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 hello. Out there, uh, for all of you who are at the sound of my voice and carrying on, honey, you know what time it is. It is time, darling, to dish tea. And you're dishing tea, darling, with Big Meats right here and right now. What are we doing, honey? This is, I'm so sick of this damn thing. Honey, we are at uh, the Donut Factory uh, commentaries, darling. And um, I'm here because I want to be very quick. I only got but a few little seconds before we have to switch out and carry it on. I want to be try to get this done. I know you guys were waiting on me to um, give this commentary, honey, on this goddamn, this, this Dwight Howard shit, Okay. And the whole thing of it is, I was I was um, waiting for my guest, who was going to come through. Uh, the Reverend Edgar Gaines was going to come through with me because he wanted to, to us to do this together. However, he got busy and carrying on, and the whole thing of it is, is that I don't. Um, I wanted to to do it with him, but I'm going to be very quick on that because. I have been letting myself be known in a couple of different areas about my feelings on it. And then I had a cute little discussion with Mr. Walter Hampton II. And, uh, you know, it made me wonder about a couple of things. But before I go into all of that, let me encourage you guys, honey, please go to my website, honey, my new website. We had to redesign it and things. Go to the website, www.dishingtea.com. And check that out for me uh, so we can get you guys to understand what's going on and want to know anything about dishing tea, darling. You want to go right there, okay? And carrying on, honey. However you're listening to me, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, or however you're listening to me, make sure that you're following and subscribing and all of those things, okay? So, uh, okay, so we got all all of those formalities out of the way. Um... Why do you keep looking like something is flashing over here? Anyway, um, this is the whole tea. And um, I want to talk about two things. At least I'm going to try to get through two things. One is this shit. I'm going to be brief with this shit, honey, with this bitch, child. I'm, I swear this shit is really on the brain cells for me with, with this uh, Dwight Howard bullshit and this madness. And the second thing, I have to give credit where credit is due because y'all know, honey, I have been um, one of the ones, honey, who have been letting Monique have it because of her uh, stance of wanting to boycott Netflix and carrying on. Remember I said right fight, but um, wrong tactics and carrying on. Well, honey, uh, Monique has has, uh, secured and this goddamn thing Shit. Um, this damn motion detector child is getting on my nerves. I think it's picking me up. Um, what has happened is, um, she, Monique has secured her, um, <laughs> thank you, baby. Um, Leo Brown says, hey, Meech Boo, love you and your advice and talking with you. I, I greatly appreciate you as well. Um, but I was saying, uh, Monique has secured her residency in Las Vegas. Now, I don't know for how long uh, it just came across my desk and carried on that she has secured her residency. And I want to give her kudos. I want to give her shout outs and kudos and carry on. I'm like, bitch, yes. Now, this is how you do it. This is how you go and secure your paper, girl. I wish she had been working on this all the time. However... As we all know, life is a journey. And, you know, I was one of her critics and carrying on when when we talked about her and the tactics that she was using with this damn boycott Netflix and all that bullshit. I was not for it. I was not standing by it because her tactics were wrong at that particular time. You don't go comparing your pocketbook to somebody else's because nobody else, nobody knows your fucking deal but you your attorney and your business people. You weren't supposed to go up in there talking about somebody else's uh, purse, girl. 
You don't go up in there talking about nobody else's purse and then you couldn't secure yours. So I was I was very, 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 very staunch in my stance on that. I made sure that she knew about it because I, I sent her my, my uh, clips and carrying on. She never responded to those. Uh, we had a little tiff on, on Twitter for half a second because, um, you know, a lot of folks were saying stuff about her husband. And I was in agreement with it because I had a little tiff with her husband. And so she didn't like that, but not that she was supposed to. But I am going to give her kudos here. I'm going to say congratulations. I love Monique. You know, I'm one of the ones I do admire her. I love her spirit. I love her tenacity. But at this particular time, at that time when she was going through all that, it, I just felt that she had the right fight and the right message, but her tactics were fucked. But at this particular point, girl, go make your motherfucking money, child. If you could sit down there and get a residency for comedy like George Wallace and um, who, who else has been there? I think probably before we called it a residency at the time, you know, for those who played Vegas and been down there for time and time again, now that seems to be the going thing. A lot of the, a lot of the children are going down there and they're, they're, they're having residencies and things in Vegas at these little hotels. And we're not little, but big hotels where they can seat these children. And she has a constant following and a constant flowing. So I'm, I must say kudos, 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 girl. That's what you do. That's how you collect your paper. Now, I wonder if she's going to move to Vegas. She's going to leave Atlanta and move to Vegas. I don't know. Um, however, um, what, whatever. Uh, Joan Rivers. Thank you, baby. Uh, uh, oh, wow. I didn't realize she had a residency there. But OK. OK. Uh, that's cute. But in any event, this is how you sit down there and get your, and get your and get your coin and stuff together. You see what I'm saying? I see some of y'all are starting to come up in here. Um, let me get y'all together. You know, um, uh, Robert has come up in here and Keem, Leo, we done already spoke. I see you up in here and, and, and commenting and things. Richie, hey, baby, what's going on with you? That's my precious pumpkin right there. What's up, baby? Uh, oh, carrot top. Yes, carrot top did have one. I remember. I remember that. Now he did have one down there. Um. So yes. So I want to give her all the kudos and care on, and, and I will be one to say yes, girl. Yay! Hooray! Ha ha ha! Bitch, you did it. Okay, that's how you work it. That's how you secure your paper. How you chasing the bag? That I would. I would jump on that bandwagon with her, and say good. This is what we do. This is how you make it happen. This is what it is. You see what I'm saying? And I'm hoping that um, uh, she and her husband's entertainment uh, company, Hicks Entertainment, is able to be part of it. I, I hope they're producing it. You know what I'm saying? So that way that, that can further get her together. If they're not sole producers, they, they better have their name on it somewhere to where they're co-producing that. So that she could get, you know, she could get that bigger check and carry on and that bigger bag and do what she needs to do to make some shit happen. So I'm very, I'm, 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 I'm shouting out from the rooftops on that. So honey, yes, yes, yes. Now let me get back on to this damn, this foolishness with, with this Dwight Howard shit. And the whole thing of it is because like I said, I was talking with Walter and, um, Oh, he was like, okay, what the hell is it? What, what's the nonsense? What's the noise, child? Because it really makes me know, never mind. I said, well, here's the thing, Walter. I said, you may be one of the children, honey, who um, don't care about all of this and that. Now, that you may not see this as a, as a collective whole because it may not bother you collectively. I said, then, too, you're one of the masculine children, okay, or the masculine acting appearing children within the LGBT plus culture and folks may not come to you the way they will come to us who are not as masculine as you are see the children will sit down here anytime we got bitches like this Mason bitch who sits up here and she said the only reason why she went public is because they started threatening her and this that and the other and I'm crying foul I'm crying bullshit okay because Walter said something that hit me and that was the fact that if you do wrong by me or if you feel you trying to come at me i'm gonna get your ass back so all of this becomes revenge this ain't got shit to do with 
uh, oh, they threatened my life because did y'all see her, her YouTube when she was sitting down there? She went live and then posted up on YouTube when she was trying to explain. God damn it. They thought they said, well, doing a little out of control. I was scared of credit this time. Copy that. She went live and things and was trying to sit down here and explain to the children why she felt the need to go live. And now, I will say that she's claiming that her main reason for going live is because she felt her life was threatened and that she wanted to have receipts. But if you listen to her conversation, okay, all of that was not because it wasn't to because her life was threatened because the implication that I got from it was that everything there was to make sure she had the receipts to back up what the fuck she said. She wanted to sit down there and put everything out about this fucking relationship. And she claims that that um, she was sexually harassed and that they had threatened her life and carried on. But you're claiming you was in the relationship. She said we were in a relationship or she wanted to have a relationship. And they never met. This is the part that got me. You said y'all never met face to face, but yet you're being sexually harassed. Bitch, how? Number one. Number two, uh, then you said that uh, this wasn't about trying to expose him for being this, that, and the other, and, and, and all of that. This was about um, making sure that they just understand they was not going to silence my voice. And this wasn't about extortion and care. No, I'm not trying to get no money out of this. You're trying to get something because she claims that she had written a book or whatever and, and talked about non-disclosure uh, agreements and stuff. And you need not sign a non-disclosure agreement because of she, she don't. She, now, she said, I don't know how they work, but to my understanding, if you sign a non-disclosure agreement and they do something to you, whatever, you can't speak about it and this, that, and the other. And that's a lie, honey. If you sign a non-disclosure agreement and something is done that's criminal, then, honey, if you, and it's done against you, then, honey, you have every right to break it because then it becomes criminal. And if you got receipts like that to prove it, honey, then you can prove all that. This bitch claims, and then she said that something was said and that's why she started recording the conversations, but she won't get into what was said. Now, you're going to tell all this other business, but you ain't going to say what was said that made you feel a certain way. For you to feel as though you had to record a conversation, bitch, please. Walter sat up there and felt like, you know, well, it's on him because he knew he was fucking with it. He shouldn't have been out there fucking around like that. He should have sat up there and... You know, this, that, and the other. And if she out of him, she out of him. And this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. You know, so who cares? And my whole thing is, see, this is where it, we, we differ. Because it wasn't her place to out him. Unless he was doing something in the dark that put somebody else in jeopardy. Particularly her. You know, and, and I say that because that's the only time I agree with outing somebody. And that is like when politicians and stuff who try to... Um, you know, they want to pass laws and stuff against the children and say this is wrong and that's wrong. But yet, and all in the daytime hours and then in the nighttime hours, they want to creep. And they want to come up and be with the girls and with the queens and with the, and with the trade and this, that, and the other. See, that's when I say uh, uh, expose all that shit. Because you're not going to have it both ways. You're not going to make me to be the big bad devil and then uh, um, want to sit down there and say that I'm wrong and stuff. And then have the children all in an uproar, the evangelicals and this, that, and the third, that they're using up here peeping and creeping and shit. We see that all the time. Look at what happened to all the pastors in Canada. You see what happened with Eddie Long and all that. You sitting up here, you marching for, against the children and shit. And then, hell, you the biggest damn perpetrator. You got the kids. You lining up with the kids and shit. Hold on. All right. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh uh, no, you're not gonna sit down there and go through all those particular changes like that. And so, I have a, I had a major problem with that. And see, Walter, like I said, he is one. He told me to tell everybody for those who don't agree with him, he, they can kiss his ass and carry it on. And I said, Walter, all that is unnecessary because you are somebody who wants to have, you know, to exact revenge on someone. See, all that revenge shit ain't going to get nobody nowhere. Then he did not want to believe or agree that her negative actions was going to, you know, embrace the community. I said, number one. She has to sit up there and say that she wasn't transgender, that she was just a feminine boy. She's not transgender. Well, if you listen to all the early reports and everything, everybody has said that she was trans because she got all this hair or whatever. So they mislabeled her in the press. The trans community is doing so much to build its equity right now to where a blow like this will set the movement back. We say this all the time when we talk about black women on them damn reality shows that want to sit down here and, and fuss and fight and fight and cuss and this, that, and other with one another. And yet you got upstanding black women who try to sit up there and say, that's not us. And yet black women all the time have to defend that kind of behavior because it gives the implication that this is what we're all about. Walter didn't want to, he didn't want to agree with that. And I was like, okay, you know what, well, fuck all that because see, I have, I, I, I have to disagree with you all day. I said, Walter, anytime we have uh, anybody who gives negative behavior and shit like that, it is, it is always going to come on, on us as up under the umbrella because shit, he's the one to talk about it. Walter is one of the biggest people who talk about well, hell, you know how these gays are in Atlanta and all the little bullshit because you done got into one to tell what the fuck the negative behavior is. So it becomes a big old cloud that further proves a point that our counterparts are saying. See, bullshit like this proves and puts us into uh, under that light that the children say that we're all about. And when we're trying to sit down there and say we want equality, we want better, we want... um um. We want to be seen differently and carrying on. We can't build our equity if we don't put in check this bullshit when folks sit up there and do this shit. Okay? He didn't want to see it that way. Hold on. I see some of y'all are coming up in here. Let me acknowledge you and say hello. Uh, okay? Let's see, Leo. You said, what? Well, this uh, That is bitterness, nothing more. And, and this is a stunt queen and nothing more. I have, I have to agree. Detrick, you done came up. Hey, baby, how are you? Diamante, Chanel, what's going on? I love from Detroit. Hey, baby, what's going on back home? What's happening back home in the D? I got to come home and visit soon, which I got to plan that. Mark has come up in here. Tracy, you're up in here. Hey, baby, what's going on? Um, so like I said, when we have negative behavior, this here, we it is up to us to put that shit in check. You know what I'm saying? We have to come against that kind of shit. But I know we're not going to stand for that. You understand what I'm saying? We're not going to stand for that. Now, this may be her truth. You know what I'm saying? This may be all her experiences are carrying on. And I'm not going to argue whether or not it happened or didn't happen. Because that ain't up for me. I don't know what happened or what didn't. Now, all I know is, bitch, you know, sit up here done fucked up the church's money as, as, um, Funky Dineva and uh, T.S. Madison would say, those are my children. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you fucked up the church's money because you went to God talking about these damn trans, transgender sex parties and carrying on, okay? And I said, I, didn't she name somebody? That's, she named one of the girls who was throwing them or something or whatever when she, when the, in the tweets and carrying on. And I said, bitch, you done fucked up everybody's motherfucking money because of your goddamn mouth. Who knows the kind of clientele that came to those girls' parties and carried on, okay? Who knows what kind of clientele that came to the bitch's party? You want to sit down there and put this girl on blast and talk about she got the parties and then finna fuck up what her coin is. Now, Walter, Walter's contention is that we as gay folks like to we like to have secrets. We like to we like to talk, you know, keep everything under hush hush or whatever. I said, Walter, that's not what the fuck this is. I said it's not about being hush hush, it's about being private. Don't nobody you don't tell everybody all your motherfucking secrets, do you? You don't tell everybody when you go uh, how much money you make. You don't tell everybody what the fuck it is that you're doing, do you? 
you know. So if 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 there's a such thing as being private in some areas, how come other people can't be private without without you feeling as though they're keeping a secret? Now, all that down low shit or whatever, you know, I'm not into that because hell, folks can get hurt. There's certain things that are private. There's certain things where you know you're doing dastardly bullshit that's going to get folks hurt because you know you ain't right. You know what your intention, what your intentions are. If your intentions are not right, then baby, something ain't right with you. Okay. And when you go and approach a situation like that, because you finna fuck it up for everybody, then yeah, something ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Something ain't right. And this bitch, the way how she just did Dwight, no, you just fucked it up for everybody. And here is another thing that got me. And that is, it is, it is uh, out there that says, this girl has tried to do this once before with somebody else. So now it becomes this. Bitch, are you trying to run a scandal or what? You sit up here trying to out all the all the the, the, the the people with the coin or what? You know, y'all remember that child on YouTube? I mean not YouTube, he on Facebook, who claims that he'd like to sleep with DL guys and he secretly record them. And then he got his ass whooped. And then right after he got out of the hospital, he said it wasn't going to stop him because he was sitting up here trying to prove a point and trying to say that those folks uh um um uh, uh that, that 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 they need to stop being on the DL and this, that, and the other. But yet, bitch, you sitting up here secretly recording them. And this, that, and the other. You done catfish them into coming into your lair and carrying on. And then you done secretly recording them. See, that's an ass whooping because your intentions wasn't right. That's an ass whooping all day. And she better be lucky her ass ain't dead some damn well. You understand? So that people is what all of this is see we have to sit down here we have to you have to sit down here with our communities we have to be the ones to get these folks together because nobody else is going to do it nobody else is going to sit down there and say y'all need to get together what they're going to do is point fingers and they're going to sit down here and uh um talk about it but they're not going to say what needs to be what needs to happen. We have to be the ones to police our community. Y'all remember back in the day before drugs got real bad and stuff and black folks were staying together and we were about our communities. We used to run the folk out. You know, those who were doing the dope and shit, we ran them out the communities. We threw them out. You know what I'm saying? We we, we if they wasn't trying to get clean, we had no, you can't bring this up in here. You know what I'm saying? We policed our own communities like that. Then all of a sudden, honey, everybody got scared of everybody. Now can't nobody do shit no more. <laughs> okay. And this, that, and the other. We're looking for the cops to do it. Well, now the cops, now they're killing everybody. You know, all in the name of. And so it, it has gotten so far out of hand to it is ridiculous. And this is the same thing here. We're trying to get out. We're trying to keep our strides and stuff together. We're trying to make sure that folks are taking us very seriously. But yet we got bitches like her who want to come through and want to fling her hair back and forth for shit and say all this old stupid ass bullshit about, oh, well, my life was in jeopardy and oh, I was in I was in fear for my life. So I could have done this and done that. And I said, there's other methods that she could have taken. She could have gone to the police and I'd have got my lawyers and stuff. Now, she claims she got a lawyer. But bitch, how come you ain't sitting up here? You could have took that to the lawyer. If you got all these kinds of receipts, she could have went to TMZ. She could have went to Entertainment Tonight. She could have went to, to the NFL Today or whatever the name of the sports shit is. She could have done that and had a bigger platform. What did she do? She got tacky and messy wanted to take it to, to, to these kids. Okay. And, and carry it on. Hold on for a second. Let me give key number two. Oh, and title that. I forgot to title it so that it don't get lost when the thing switch over. Um, yeah. So, that's what all this is. So, yeah, I, am I pissed about it? Hell yeah, I'm pissed. Hell yeah, I'm pissed because all this was real. It was dirty. It was underhanded. It was unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? Complete 
complete and totally unfucking necessary. Okay? Now listen, I hope I don't lose my signal because I'm trying to go up here and get myself resituated and things. And I'm getting on this elevator. So, uh uh-uh. But we have to police these communities and carry it on. Okay, let me let me uh, go back. I want to get the comments because y'all coming up in here, baby. Y'all talking to me, and I want to make sure y'all get heard. You hear me? Okay. Let me see. Okay, Tracy said, "Hey, Meech, Diamante, you say it's cold as hell." <laughs> okay, I know y'all should have snow and shit right now, don't you? And carrying on, and all of that calamity. Wait a minute, I'm going through the kitchen chair and things. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, when you, uh, you, you said you were, I sure did, especially people calling him trans, right? Okay, Leo, you say, yes, I say this all the time, check everyone. Just because some of us are, that doesn't mean we all are, exactly. Leo says, uh, nothing wrong with, with being a thought, but still. Okay now, okay, now let's address that. Because, see, here's the whole ticket, okay? If you're going to do it, baby, ain't nobody getting down on you because that's what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at a coin. And can't, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Fuck, I did that wrong. <laughs> okay. I ain't mad at you because you got the stunt going on or whatever. My whole thing is, bitch, is supposed to be honor among thieves. Bitch, if you supposed to be sitting up here about your shit, how come you ain't doing the shit right? Okay? I can't sit down here and knock a hole. I can't sit down here and knock the drug dealer because they making their money. What I can do is criticize because you're doing that shit wrong. Why in the fuck you sitting up here in the damn hood where everybody else is struggling, bitch? Go out there to get your coin where the money is, bitch. And come home and you're supposed to... Haven't y'all learned anything? The children sit down there, they don't never do shit at the home or near the house. They always went away from the house because they had to have sanctuary somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You don't bring the shit back to your house and all this calamity. But you can't tell that to people, right? So if this is what you're doing and you want to be high profile and carry on, okay, fine. Bitches, a number of bitches out there that do that shit. But then they get caught up because they done got caught up in their emotions. And that's what I thought this was, too. That she done got caught up in all her goddamn feelings and shit because she had found out that he was fucking somebody else. Bitch, but you just said that y'all wasn't fucking. So what the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the what? Okay? Tracy, you say what? Don't out people because it's messy to me. I totally agree. Okay? I totally agree. Leo, you say, Walter can't say shit. We all have unclean hands. Trust me. <laughs> okay? Okay, exactly, Meech. That's messy, says Tracy. Jim, I you, say, I did hear that and pushing her book. Okay? And you said, you remember that. So you remember the guy that was on YouTube, um, on Facebook, that was videotaping him having sex with all these so-called DL brothers, and then he got his ass whooped. Mm-hmm. Let's see. You, Leo, you say, what? Well, listen, I wish... You would mess with, I wish you would mess with my money. I will fuck up your whole life. Do you understand me? I got, okay, how? Okay, what the, do you understand me? How? Not your whole life. I, I will fuck up your whole life. Okay. Okay, Tracy, you didn't see that? Child, I'm telling you, baby, oh my God, this is 18. So this had to have been 16, 15, somewhere up in there. This child was up in here, child. He was sitting there posting videos. Uh, on Facebook, and I think the, what he, the sex things I think he put up on Twitter and carrying on. I mean, not Twitter, uh, Tumblr. But yes, he was sitting up there, and when he got his ass whooped, they had to, he was coming out the hospital, and he sat up there, and, 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 and like he had bounced back from it or whatever. We're like, you know, fuck this, fuck that, and blah, blah, blah. He didn't care because it was his job to expose these folks and carrying on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he said. Uh, Kyrie, hey, you done came up in here. Zakia, you done came up in here. Eric, you up in here too. Ah, come on. Chester, you say this bitch is playing the victim, honey. Okay, hey, hey, Kia. Yeah, I know you was blowing up my phone, Heifer. You know I ain't answer either. Say, yeah, I did it on purpose because you ain't blowing me up tonight. Leo, you say what? No, she wasn't getting the money she wanted. I know whole tricks when I see it. Ah, what's you say? 
Ha, come on. Okay, come on now. Come on now, the children. Mm. Okay. What'd you say, Eric? Okay, speak about it, baby. I'm, you know, hey, fuckery and foolishness. Exactly, Diamante, completely. Okay, Leo, you say what? Well, just like with Carrie something, that Hollywood child was stupid. I want to whoop her ass. Okay, I got to find that one out. Give me that one. Give me that one. I need to know what that one is. Okay, uh, Tracy, you say what? Well, I'm just tired of it. Of it seems people want to throw people under the bus for sports. Ah, it's crazy. Now, you know what? Uh, listen. And as, as you see, so you just hit something there, and I and I and I and I like that you put it that way. I like that you put that that way. They do it for sport. They do it for the entertainment. See, we are in such a reality show type of society. See, we don't went from being microwave to being reality show. Okay, because we want life to be so fucking instant, and then we want this fame to be just as instantaneously. And so everybody wants to be a fucking soundbite. Everybody wants to be a motherfucking click. Everybody wants to be a like. Everybody wants to be a hit. You know what I'm saying? And see, this kind of shit here, because folks got money and carry it on, they think it's supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to go after it, you're supposed to whatever, whatever. And it's becoming all about entertainment. You know what I'm saying? And this shit here, we have to be the ones to put that in check. We have to be the ones to say, hey, not on my watch. Come on, Iyala. Get Okay, not on my watch. You understand? We have to. We have to. We have to, children. Because otherwise it means nothing. If we don't do it, then that means we, we relinquish all of our power as a community to other people. Hey, now. You know, and we keep saying that we want we want to be seen differently. We keep saying that we want different images of us out there. We keep saying that, OK, just because this is a femme queen or just because this is a trans woman or just because this is a trans man or just because just because we want to be seen in a better light. OK, when 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 um, queer as folk was out on TV, you know, the white children had the hoe, the, the boy who was the hoe and carrying on, you know, he was just a hoe. But but when we had uh, Noah's Ark and we had, um, what was it, what was the child, the hoe that was, um, uh, what was it, the child who was the hoe in, in Noah's Ark? Okay, it, it was a problem because now he was scared to go get his testing done. He was scared to get, his, you know, and so it's always that oomph degree when we do it. You know what I'm saying? And we've got to come up out of all of this foolishness. We have got to be the ones to stop wanting. You know, what? what is it with just keeping it real? I'm just keeping it real. I got receipts. You know, when it doesn't mean anything. Okay. All this sounds like you were just a hurt, a scorned bitch who wants to sit down here and get back at somebody. You know, and we've all been there. I'm not saying that I'm ch I'm so holier than thou that I'm above and carrying on. I don't want y'all to think that I don't have my moments when I feel like I want to take a bitch down. Okay. Uh -huh. We've all been there. We've all done it at one point in time or another. I'm just glad that at my particular age, I'm almost 50. And so at this particular age, uh, stage of the game, I'm a little bit more versed in life. And feel as though I have a little bit more common sense to take a better approach. Okay. Um, okay. We want to sit down there and quote former first lady, Michelle Obama, when they go low, we go high. But most of the time, honey, I don't think we go high. I think we get high so that we can go lower, you know, and blame it on the alcohol and all this old bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's the tea. Let me see. I got to go back to some of these comments. I ain't get them all yet. I didn't get them all. I kid you say, I love to see D get mad. <laughs> Why do people like to see me get mad? Do, do I look funny or something? Is there something on my face or what? Or what? Do I, I know my, the little country in me come out and my, my speech changes a little bit. <sighs> Whatever. Dear Monta, you say what? Yes, honor among thieves. <laughs> okay, yeah. You from the D for real. I love it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you better know it, honey. Okay, you better know it. So, yes, Tracy, you, wait a minute, who, uh, Cornelius Williams, why are you up in here, child? I haven't heard from you in quite some time, honey. Uh, we need to talk, because I need to bring you back on the radio show. I know you got that second book out. And, um, yeah, I just had your cousin back on just last week. Um, Michael, you back up in here. Tracy, you say what? You don't eat and shit in the same place. Okay, hey, now, nah, come on. Uh, Leo, you say, listen, I say this all the time. If you're going to hoe, be a hoe away from home. See, hello. You don't take that shit to the house. You don't bring it to the house. You got to have a place of sanctuary, you know, and carrying on. You got to have a place of sanctuary. Eric, you say, share this live, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. It's like, yeah, and carry it on and shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> stop. <laughs> you mocking me, Key. <laughs> Okay, Jarrell is in here. Mark, hey, Mark, I need an appointment, honey. I got to get these kinks about this motherfucking back. So, oh, we'll talk. Um, Leo, I remember him. He got shot too. He was doing it from uh, he uh, he's and yeah, he's still doing it from what I've heard. The, oh yeah, the, the 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 YouTube child, the Facebook child. Yeah, from what I'm understanding, he is. Daniel Diamante, you love your shot from Stephanie Mills. Oh, you like that, baby? Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate you for that. That's, that's my baby, honey. Stephanie Mills is my little big sister. Ah, uh, and Patty LaBelle, my mama. And that's how I see I consider Patty LaBelle and Stephanie Mills to be mother and daughter. I'll get on that later. Uh, Michael, you say Walter's one messy queen, honey. Okay. Diamante, you say shout out. Okay, who is this Walter person? Okay, let me explain to you who Walter is. Um, uh, Walter Hampton, Walter Lee Hampton, you ha he's a uh, YouTube uh, sensation and he's, he's been up on Facebook. He don't do a lot of Facebook stuff much anymore because in the beginning, you know, it was a, he was a lot, there was a lot of tirades and stuff, but he does uh, YouTube videos daily. And Walter was one of the children, honey. He's a muscle uh, man and things, you know, bodybuilder and all of that. And his claim to fame, honey, is... Uh, his his position on folks who are HIV positive and those who uh, don't like to disclose their status. And he doesn't like people who are unhealthy, i.e. fat folks and this, that, and the other. He has a, and though I understand the position that he's coming from, you know, in wanting to say, okay, listen, you know, again, like I, like I was telling Monique, right message and right fight wrong tactics now he would sit down there and he's like okay we need to be a healthier community in this side and the other you know we can't do it if we all don't want to take care of our health and we don't want to exercise and we don't want to do this and we cannot be a thriving community if we refuse to be honest about our hiv status okay now that there is the message however his tactics are he would sit down there and be little and be mean and be messy and be contrite and be ornery with his statements. OK, all in the name of, oh, I'm keeping it real or whatever the case may be. And he called folks out. He outs people on their HIV statuses and carried on. In fact, that was part of our conversation because I told him, I said, honey, you just don't go around outing folks. And his, his thing was, if you come for me or if you try to kill me or whatever, then that's the reason why I out you. He said, for those who are HIV positive and care now, I've only outed them when they have lied to me and told me that they were. He said, and we've had several conversations about it. And it's not like you didn't have ample time to tell me you decided you decided to lie. And then when I found out about it, that's when I went public because you lied after several conversations. And how he presented that to me, I can't fuck with it because I've been in that situation before, too, where you sit down there, you have several conversations. In fact, I had an HIV scare where, hell, the conversation was started by the dude. Hey, let's have a serious talk. OK, are you positive? No. Are you? No, I'm not. I, I got cancer, this, that, and the blah, blah, blah. So, oh, OK. You know, and then one particular day he ended up, he said he had left his medicine over at my house or whatever. And I said, OK, that's odd. And then he said he left it in the bathroom under the sink. Boy, what the fuck is you doing in my bathroom under the sink? Why would you do that? You know, that doesn't make sense. 
And then I said, well, maybe, you know, he, you know, didn't want everybody to get to it because it needs to be in a cool place or whatever. But that still did not make sense to me because what the fuck is you doing rumbling through the damn bathroom, right? So I went to go look at that. And at that time, I was an HIV counselor. You know, I, I was a, a case manager and things. So I knew the meds. And at that time, it was Combevere and Crixivan. And that's what he had with his name on those bottles up under my sink. And yes, everything in me wanted to murder him. Individually, I wanted to sit there and rip his skin off layer by individual layer. I want to rip his fucking skin off till I got down to the core of his skeleton and then I want to pick his bone apart piece by individual piece. I wanted to disconnect the head bone from the shoulder bone, the shoulder bone from the disc bone. I wanted to disconnect him limb from limb, piece by motherfucking piece because you did not have to lie to me especially when we had this conversation out in the open. And you could tell me about you hoeing. You could tell me about you being out on the streets. You could tell me about you and your daddy get high together. You could tell me about you fucking this. You could tell me about all that. But you couldn't, you lied to me about this and you was the one to come to me with the conversation. Hmm? Okay. That there was a while ago. My most recent time was I had someone Hmm. We have been sexually active for about five years. And after reading my first book, <laughs> after reading my first book, he told me he was given the courage because I inspired him. And it gave him the courage to finally tell me. Now, he didn't tell me this until after we were having a conversation about him already being partnered and this, that, and the other with someone else. And why, you know, it didn't work between us or whatever, and how I never had time because I'm always working and blah, 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 blah. And then he said, well, you know, I read your book from cover to cover and oh, what a wonderful book it is. And it gave me the hope and it, and it inspired me to, 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 be, to, to stand in my truth. And I said, to stand in your truth. I said, okay. And I'm sitting up here saying, okay, well, honey, I know that you're out. I met you at a sex party. What are you talking about, right? And then that's what he laid it on me. He said, well, I'm able to stand in my truth as with the fact that I have been an HIV positive man for the last 20 years. And why is this the first time I'm hearing this that we've been fucking for five? Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm, the children. So you know, I you know, I I'm one who gets tested every six months. I've been doing this since I was fifteen because when I first came out and I was very active, I've always you know I've I've I went into this thing of being tested every six months. Okay. Um, and so that there now is just my ritual. I get tested every six months. And so because of that, and then uh, in addition to being tested every six months, if I'm like, if I'm going down to big boy pride or if I'm going somewhere where I know uh, debauchery is going to take place, I get tested once before I get there. And then I get tested 30 days after coming back from it. So that's in between the six months thing. Okay. So that there is my ritual. So I am constantly getting checked, baby, because um, they're still saying that that the virus can still be dormant and stay and can still lay dormant for 10 years. You know, uh, it still has that effect. It, you know, the likelihood of it is, you know, it hasn't been that likely, but it still has that effect. And so that there is that. So I understood where he was with all of that. Hold on. Let me let me uh, make this radio call, honey. Y'all hold on for a second. Y'all know these are the Donut Factory Chronicles, right? Or the commentaries. 15 in base, 27 from back of the house. All is clear at this time. So um, be that as it may. So when he said that and how he put it, how he how Walter puts that, I couldn't fuck with him with that. But see, at the same time, like I say, the way how it's done and his tactics are carried on, they are for shit. Because he doesn't come across like it is in a, 
loving situation. It is more so like, bitch, you know, he wanna, it's a necro. You know, and, and, and it becomes this whole ghetto superstar kind of thing. And it's not being received well. So anytime he has his commentaries and carrying on, it becomes a little that way. You know what I'm saying? So that's who Walter is. Now, now let me get back to the comments. Okay, Tracy, you said exactly. Oh, Kerry Rose, the football player. Oh, really? Okay, I got to get his story, Lee. Leo, that kid, you say, well, I'm a different convo. Yes, you are, honey. <laughs> Uh, who is this? Uh, Damon and came in. Hey, baby, how are you? <clears throat> okay. Leo, you said his ex outed him some years ago. I want to whoop his ass. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I understand. Zakia, instant popcorn. <laughs> uh, Tracy, you say, well, we have to take some personal responsibility sometimes. Exactly. We have to take personal responsibility and see that there was part of the hard work. See, a lot of this neck rolling and got to put receipts out and this, that, and the other comes from folks, you know, wanting to make sure that their voices are heard, trying to prove a fucking point. And then at the same time, everybody on both ends are not standing up to, their, to what their part of it was. You know what I'm saying? This person up here, okay, I, I, somewhere in the story, somebody was saying that they got catfished and this, that, and the other, okay? So in her being, ca or, or some, whoever felt that they were catfished, somebody lied. And then on top of the lie came other lies and then other duckings and this, that, and the other. So now, we, so now everybody wrong. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Eric, you say what? The white girls carry on. Carry on. Okay, yeah, they do carry on. Okay, they carry on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Dear my you say yes they do. Okay. Uh you oh you say D I'm sorry, in the wrong in uh I'm in the wrong room. Sorry, you so stupid, Dakia. Okay, Jamita, hey baby girl, how you doing out there, B Mo? Okay, I, I you be real, Zakia said you be real. I'm always real, baby. That's that's the whole ticket. Philip, you done came up in here. Kevin done came up in here. Why y'all up so late? Well, Philip, honey, I'm on the third shift, baby. So, you know, that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. That's the whole ticket. So everybody else just happened to be nine hours like me, baby. So, you know, that's how it is. Trace, did you say what? He seems to have bias against people who are HIV positive. Yes, Walter does seem to have a bias against that. Um... And I would, you know what, according to his story or to, according to him, a lot of it is because the community itself, a lot of folks don't want to don't want to disclose their information and carrying on. Like I said, at the top of this, he wanted to sit up there and say that we as gay folks love to live behind secrets. And no, it's not living behind secrets. It is sitting up there. Some information is private. It's on a need to know basis. You know what I'm saying? But then we have that section of the community. And this is where we get into trouble because, see, every section, every part of humanity, I don't care where you are, gay, straight, black, white, indifferent, you know, Hindu, Buddhist, Buddhist you know, Christian, uh, okay, non-Christian, uh, uh, Protestants and Catholics, whatever. Every facet of the human race, they have that section to where you got people just going to be people and want to do foolish, stupid ass shit. And most of the time, whatever section they come from, their narrative end up becoming the narrative for the entire community. And so it is up to us, which is what I'm saying about this heifer here. It is up to us to make sure we police that to say, you know what? No, that is not all of us. We are not going to sit down here and take the rap for that bullshit because this is her particular individual story. You are not going to treat me and, uh, with this wave of umbrella stuff because you think everybody's supposed to act like her. That's why gay bashing is what it is, because a lot of folks feel as though like the femme queens or whatever are the representation of what gay is, which is why a lot of the masculine brothers who are who are closeted, not the ones who are private, the ones who are closeted, they're scared for the world to know. This is why they stay closeted, because they don't want to be associated with that, because that becomes what gay is. And gay is everything. Just like we are not all thugs and carrying on the way they want you to think these drug dealers and stuff doing as black folks. But yet we have to live up under that umbrella because that is how media and everybody else paint us when they see crime go down and this, that, and the other. You see what I'm saying? So we have to police that type of behavior. 
And and we have to we have to discourage negative negative behavior like that. Eric, you say what? Oh, that's that that's wrong. Brother has problems. Uh, brother has problem. Not easy to speak uh, on HIV conversations. Okay, I get you on that. Okay, Brianna. Hey, daughter, you know came up in here. Eric, you say you're too funny, D. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Eric. So D D uh, D. Do you date guys whom HIV positive? I don't have a problem with it. I'm HIV doesn't scare me. Okay, not the way that it used to when I was younger. Because see, remember, I'm I'm almost 50, so I come from the generation where when it first came out, it was just AIDS. You know, or well, it became then it became HTLV3. First it was greed, gay related disease, then it became HTLV3, then it became AIDS, then it became HIV plus AIDS and all of that. So I come from the era where when it first hit, folks was just dropping. When you got it, you died. Okay, we didn't have medicines and care. No, honey, if I saw you today, two weeks, literally, I know folks to where I saw them today, had a conversation. And within two weeks, they were gone. Some folks died two days later. You know, we found that they were positive. In two days, they were gone. My cousin, uh, I, was, I became my cousin's caregiver friend from the time my cousin told me. It was two years. And my cousin passed. So... Um, yeah, so I come from that generation and at the time, you know, I've always touched and cared. I've always been around folks who are positive, um, because I wanted them to know that somebody loved them, you know, because the world was just so fucking cruel, but they were cruel out of fear because they did. We, oh God, wait a minute. I didn't mean to get emotional on this. <sighs> mm. We were just so cruel, so nasty. We were so fucking nasty. If y'all watch Pose, honey, that's real. I live that. I live that. And I am one of the fortunate ones to have come through that era. And I have not contracted anything other than what? A urinary tract infection because I wasn't drinking enough water. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful, you know what I'm saying? Because sex was my addiction. And I I say was, although they tell us to say is, I say was because the the physicality of acting out, I've learned how to control, you know, and carrying on. I still have my bouts and I know when addiction and talking and when it's not. Uh, and we had to learn how to have healthy, healthy sex lives. And see, I'm somebody who can be a hoe, honey. I like the group thing. I like uh, multiple partners and all that kind of bullshit because, you know, my appetite is that way. At the same time, um, I can't do that like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm Like I said, I'm almost 50 now, so the game has changed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, getting older, you know. Uh, I'm not the 17-year-old, honey, the Energizer, energizer Bunny like I was, child. I'm a Duracell. <laughs> As some cases are ever ready. <laughs> but, um, whew, you know, so we had to learn how to do things and learn how to Stop accepting sex when we want love and intimacy and those kinds of things. And that's hard because oftentimes it only comes in that form or the the person that you want it from. It only comes in that particular form. So it's a conundrum. And that there, you know, I, I, I challenge folks and I say this all the time to create your learning to love myself playlist. And that playlist consists of all the, the the songs that you would sing to your boo thing, honey. All them I'm getting in the mood songs and things that you would love to sing around the house and sing to your man or to your to your significant other. And take those same songs and when you're by yourself, get into a mirror and look at yourself and sing those songs to yourself. So you can have somebody to love. You sing it to the person that you love. You sing it to you so that it encourages you to understand how you are. So we can stop accepting all this old fucked up ass behavior from these folks. Stop letting the Masons and all these other little bullshit ass bitches, honey, who 
to feel as though they got receipts and got the neck roll. Stop letting their particular truth become our narrative. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, let me get back to these comments. Uh, Zakir said, I told you what I know. You so stupid. Uh, child, what? I would have been on the first 48. <laughs> I almost thought I was, child. But at the time, you know, when he told me that, um, yeah, I, I had to do some soul searching, honey. Because the, the, And then I think to add insult to injury, before I took his phone number out of my phone because I thought we were, we were going to at least establish some kind of friendship, right? And, you know, I was like, okay, let, I'm going to let this blow over and, and I'll just say, so I called him because, you know, he was just on my mind. And when I called him, child, he gave me, he gave me such shade and such a motherfucking attitude, like, you mad? I'm like, bitch, what the fuck is this? You mad at me, bitch? And then that's when I got mad. That's when I got pissed. I was like, you know what? Fuck you and the motherfucking world that you came in on, honey. With a goddamn crooked ass broomstick, bitch. How in the fuck you mad at me? Because I just called to check up on your little bitch ass, but you mad? You mad? Because I picked up the phone and said, hey, you on my mind. And that pissed you off. But I'm not supposed to be upset that for five years we fucking bitching. You've been positive for 20. And the first time you told me when you want to sit down here and say you partnered to somebody else, bitch. Hmm. I'm at work. Let me be cool. Mm hmm. Who's that? I felt that rage and starting to build up. Okay. Eric, you say, well, come on, D, that's madness. Stop that, stop that crazy testing. No, and no, it's not madness. I do it every six months, child. Mm -mm. That's not madness, darling. They're just trying to make sure that I keep myself together. And see, this is why if you're going to be sexually active, darling, these are some of the things that we have to do in order to fit the bill, child. If you're sexually active and being single, this is not, I'm not partnering, honey. I don't have a partner. So it's not like I'm with a partner and we're sexually active or whatever. But even if I was with a partner and we're sexually active with multiple people, that there is called being responsible, honey. No, 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 no. This is much more different than going to the doctor to get your checkup once a year or whatever to get your physical. This is sexual health, child. And it's more than just HIV because, hell, syphilis is back on the rise. Gonorrhea is back on the rise. Herpes is back on the rise. My doctor told me that half of the black folks got herpes and don't even know it. Half. 50% of black folks have are herpes. And herpes is anything from the cold sores and carrying on, because that's, that's the simplex one. But anytime you got genitalia and stuff, you got bumps and stuff around you, you know, those pus bumps and carrying on, not the boils. That's something different. But when you got them little pus bumps and things and it turn all red and itchy and all that kind of shit, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's his delivery that seems not compassionate, says Trey. So, yeah, you're right. Okay. Only need to know. Okay, you're right. Only, only need to know basis. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Tracy, you say, well, I came from the same era. Me too. Okay, so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Eric, you say, the meds was cancer pro uh, uh, protocol years ago. Yes, they were. Exactly. That's exactly what they were, child. And, so, and, and the medicines themselves, that was, it was like what? Um... Uh, chemotherapy in the bottle. That's how come it was, it was killing the folks because shit, they were doing more damage to the body than the disease was at the time. Okay. Uh, Eric says, well, do you have a partner now or are you looking? No, I'm not partner now and I'm not necessarily looking. Uh, if it happens, it happens. It's going to happen organically for me, honey. I'm not necessarily looking, uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm not, I don't want it either. You know, I'm, I've gotten to a point where I'm comfortable being by myself because it took me a long time to that. I've, I'm, I'm a mother of a house. So I've always had people around me. I always got folks living with me or something or whatever, which was one of the criticisms that Mr. Man was saying, you always got somebody in your house. Um, so, you know, being a, being a mother of a house, being a caretaker and carrying on, you know, and a caregiver and provider, and in some cases an enabler, I have to admit that, you know, um, 
I've always liked to have people around me, but I got to the point now I'm I'm happy with, with my own company. I can sit down, honey, and, and, and have a date with my date night with myself with getting me a, a bottle of wine, honey, making me my favorite meal, honey, watching my favorite programming, honey, cuddled up with my Wonder Woman blanket, honey, because it's me and loving me, honey. Jack my dick, bitch, when I'm sexy and feeling fabulous and call it grace. Yeah, I said it just like that. OK, so I have no problem with, uh, with with learning how to love me. And I'm still learning that, you know, I'm still uh, entering into the essence of all of that. So if it happens, it happens. OK, and it will happen organically, you know, but then and then, like I said, it'll happen organically. I'm not going to turn it away either because I've had prospects or whatever and um, all of that. Um, but, you know, friendships have developed from it. And things to see. One of the things about that is the folks, the folks do not know how to uh, live in the art forms of intimacy and courtship. See, everybody think intimacy means sex, and that's not it. That's a, it's a part of it or a component, but that's not complete intimacy. So yeah, so that there's that. Tracy, you say what? Well, people are abandoned. Were, uh, were abandoned during that era because of it. And it made me more compassionate towards people. I worked in nursing at that time. Nobody wanted to uh, to give people who were positive care, but I did. But many refused to, to give care or pass the assignment. I know, child. I know. I know. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Eric, you say, what, well, broomstick? Stop it, baby. Ha, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Eric, are you doing protective sex? Yes, I am, darling. I have to. I'm not always. I'm going to be very honest with you. It's not always. But I don't have a lot of penetrative sex these days. So, uh uh-huh. And my philosophy is this, honey. Uh, Penetration is always an option, but not necessarily my goal. So, you know, it's for that reason. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me see. What is the air? You say what? D, I like to know, uh, can you cook Southern food? Yes, I can, baby. I I cook, baby. I can cook. Uh, Leo, you say, yes, I agree with all of this. Okay, nothing wrong with uh, being with you. Okay, you know what? Hell, it it can't be nothing wrong with it, honey, because if I can't be with me, who? why should I expect anybody else to? Okay, why should I want anybody else to? Say, how about that? OK, so all of this and all of that and see and, and see we're at this particular stage of this conversation. Now, imagine if Miss Mason can have this conversation about herself. If she stops sitting up here looking for the next big thing or the next meal ticket, she claims she ain't looking for no money. But who cares? Who, OK. And Walter Walter's big thing was who cares about all of this shit? You know, OK, so he wasn't out. He got out of who cares? And on the grand scheme of things, he may have a point loosely because if it if if and I'm going to tell you, if it wasn't so much as straight folks who were so busy trying to point the fingers at who gay and who ain't, this wouldn't be so much of a big deal. What it would be is just a sports scandal because hell, the, the children are always up there. The, the, honey, the gay ain't going no damn way. It's been around forever. It ain't going nowhere. All them children who are up there in the damn do I did it, they know what they're doing. They know what the hell they're doing, you know, and they're going to keep doing it. Shit. okay. And they're going to keep doing it in the dark. They're going to do all the team members know who, who and this, that, and that. So it ain't no big deal. It only becomes a big deal when folks get messy. okay. when you sit down here, you done had umpteen kids with all these little. This is supposed to be a one night stand. Have a good time. Get the fuck up out of it. What do you do? You end up impregnating the bitch. Why? 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 Okay, then you mad because now she got to sit down here. You got to be bothered with her crazy ass for the next 18 years in life because you decided to have a kid with her. Or you done fucked around with the wrong queen, got a sissy and whatever, and now you got the wrong one. Either she going to sit up here and, and, and now she want to extort you. Now she want to sit down here and do this, that, and the other. Or you not find the queen who want to get all your damn coin, who want to have you and your boys and this, that, and the other behind your back. All that craziness. Why? Okay. So I get it. And I understand it. Okay. Uh, th- that he has a point loosely. But see, my biggest contention is we have to learn how to police this shit. 
We have to learn how to police it because if we're claiming that we want to make strides and we're looking for equity in, in, in mainstream culture, so that we can be taken seriously, then this kind of foolishness need not be the narrative. How about that? Okay? How about that? Okay, Eric, you say, well, when time for Southern Dishes, uh, uh, when time for Southern Dish waiting on invite, Mr. D. <laughs> Okay, you're right. No big deal. Uh, feel you. Okay. Ha. Oh. So, Eric, you want, okay. So, you want some down home southern cooking? Well, it's going to be with a northern twist because I'm from Detroit, even though I live down here in Atlanta. Okay. Stephanie, hey, baby, how are you? It's the bigger question. Everything is, is moving and grooving on this end. But listen, let me get myself together because I've got to finish the, doing the work and uh, get ready to do what it is I'm going to get ready to do. You hear me? So with that, uh, let me say this. Um, once we stop rewarding negative behavior, once we stop accepting someone else's rants and raves to be gospel, to define the collective and not be individual, then we'll be able to move forward. Um, Walter may have a point with who cares, and maybe that's his, maybe that in his who cares may be what he's trying to, what he was saying when I say, uh, stop letting her or anyone else's rant become a collective narrative. You see what I'm saying? Because it, it falls into the play of what you eat don't make me shit. Okay. Um, and et cetera, et cetera. Let's see. Um, what was this? Hold on. Eric, you say, well, oh, Detroit is hometown also. You Okay. You live in New York. What part of New York? I was just there back in May. My road dog lives in, in Brooklyn. Uh, Stephanie, you say, are you a security guard? Yes, I am. I do work security. You got sex, <laughs> sex security. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I am. I'm a security officer for a hotel. So yeah. Um, and I work for the hotel, not a company, honey. So it's a little bit different. So that's cute. But, um, yeah. So, um, in addition to all of that, let's stop allowing the messiness and the foolishness and the fuckery to become our negative, our narrative. You understand? Um, let us learn how to rise above all of that so that we can keep those people at bay so that it doesn't become us. For those of you who feel as though that uh, a community is represented by the foolishness, honey, then you need to grow up because everybody, every section of society has that element that's always just a little fucked up side of it, okay? And so we have to learn how to say they don't define who I am. You know what I'm saying? And that's what all this is. And that's what all this was. Mason, uh, Ella J or whatever the goddamn hell her name is. Just I was pissed with that bitch because she would she sat up there and did all that foolishness unnecessarily. Now, she may have her own reasons and I may say it's unnecessarily because I disagree with it. But she have her own reasons. OK, because that's her truth. And at the same time, it's young shit far as I'm concerned. Uh, at the same time. Let's sit down here and let's let us not reward negative behavior. OK, let us not reward negative behavior because that shit there was unfucking called for outing folks and this that, and the other and displaying their public business like that because you were a scorn somebody, not because uh, uh, not because. It was, um, you know, you, you, you under a protection mode or whatever. You did it. Uh, her main reason, like she said, if you go watch her video, you, you're able to uncover. Because she didn't say, oh, because my life was threatened. That came like fit the thing down the line. You know, she wanted to be her. She wanted to show she wasn't no punk. And this, that, and other bitch. That means you had an ax to grind. You're trying to prove something. Which means your motivation behind all of this was fucked up. Yeah. So see all of that. So let me say all that, honey. And I'm going to let you guys go because I got to get back up here to do what I need to do. 
So, uh, Eric, you say you in Brooklyn. OK, Tracy, you say, well, we have to learn to build each other up. OK, and Eric, you say, well, oh, she's a dirty rat. Yes, she is. OK, so with that in mind, darlings, I'm going to get back over here to do all this. So, honey, finish all of your crumpets because the tea has been dished and you've been dishing tea, darlings, ah, with Big Meats right here at the fact at the Donut Factory commentaries. OK, so because of that, honey, if you love me, tell a friend, honey, if you hate me, tell an enemy. But do know this, any way, any way, shape, style, form of fashion or one way, style, form of fashion or always all styles, all forms, all fashions, everything that I'm doing will move forward. So on that note, baby, I got to go to work. So ha, I'll talk with you guys again soon. Ciao.